All right, so you want a Plex Media server, and you don't know what you're doing, and uh, neither do I, but let's get to it, and uh, we're going to figure it out. So I've been working on switching my Plex server from uh, old hardware to interim hardware back to old hardware. So I'm doing kind of an upgrade thing here. I don't like how my old Plex server was installed. Uh, it was all kind of bare bones installation right onto, the, onto Ubuntu desktop. I want to go with a full Docker setup with all the containers, and I want to run it off Ubuntu server. So first step we need to do here is install Ubuntu server on the on the hardware. So first thing we're gonna do is download Belena Etcher. Click download here and portable is gonna be fine for us. I'm doing all of my configuration on a Windows machine. I've got the the um, hard the bare metal here to my right. Uh, that's gonna be the server now for Ubuntu. Ah, oh, so yeah, for Plex. So hit the download button here. We also need to download Ubuntu server. So, Ubuntu server download. And we're going to download that one right there. Cool. So, this is going to start up. I've already downloaded this from the other day, so I'm going to cancel that. We're going to open Belana Etcher. And then once that pops up, we'll be able to make our bootable USB drive. Okay. So we're going to flash from file. We're going to choose our Ubuntu server download. So that's the desktop version. Where did I download it? There it is. Live server. Open. We're going to change our device here. Um, this is going to show you all the stuff you don't want to change. These are all your um, system drives. Right now I've got a 2 gig flash card installed. That's the lowest one you can use. So put a flash card in. It doesn't matter if you formatted it or not. It's going to do that right now. So flash, yeah, we'll let it do that. This is going to take a little bit, so we'll fast forward through here. And our next step is going to be to plug this into the the computer we're using as a server, boot it to this flash drive, and then we'll install Ubuntu server from there. All right, so now we are successful on our Etcher. We flash this uh, Ubuntu server install. We're going to head over to the computer here and install it on it. Okay, so this is my current setup right here. So this big guy here is my Plex server. This is what, it's an old gaming rig of mine. It's got an i5 CPU in it uh, with quick sync, so it transcodes pretty well. It's been working well, but I don't like how the install has. I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't know what I was doing when I when I built this the first time. So it's running Ubuntu desktop with the all the apps installed directly onto the OS. It's kind of all cobbled together. It's hard to keep maintained. It's hard to upgrade. This guy here is an old server computer that I'm using as an interim PC. It's uh, does not have QuickSync. It does not transcode very well, but gets me through a couple of days while I make this transition. So what I've done is everything I'm about to show you today for this computer. I've already done to this computer. And then I just have the SATA cables for the hard drives for the media mapped over to that computer so we can still watch some uh, of our content while we're doing this changeover. So I shut this PC down. We're going to put in our boot stick, turn it on. And then over here, we're going to have to hit F8 or F12 or F11 uh, 11 for boot menu. And we are going to boot into that multiple card reader, the USB. Hit enter. This is going to boot us into Ubuntu server. So we're going to try or install Ubuntu server. Hit enter. All right, so we're going to select English. We're not going to update. So it's saying there's a newer version of the installer out there. We're going to say uh, we're good. Hit enter. Keyboard's fine. We're hitting these done backs down here. So done. Uh, yeah, we want to do a Ubuntu server. It sees that we're connected on ETH there to 1.91. Okay. We don't need a proxy address. That's fine. Use entire disk. So we're gonna we have a small 250 gig solid state that's gonna be running this. So yeah, we'll use that. Get it head down here to done. Storage configuration, sounds great. We're gonna eventually gonna add some media uh, hard drives to the, at the end of this uh, tutorial, but for now we're good. Confirm, sure, break it all, let's go. 
Okay, so here's where we're gonna put in our name, Ben. This is gonna be Plex. Oh, Ooh, no capitals, all right. Plex MS, we'll call it. Uh, pick a username, call it that Ben again, and then, all right, so password entered. We will go down to done. We do want open SSH. We don't need an identity for that. And we hit done. Everything here we're gonna end up installing eventually, so don't really worry about any of this. Uh, we are gonna install Docker ourselves. So just skip all through this, go down to done, and let it do its thing. All right, so this is finished now. We just need to go down to reboot. It'll come back up and we'll be good to go. Please remove installation medium. Yep, let's do that. Press enter. All right, so the last thing we have to do here is hard set the IP address of our server. Uh, so we're going to go, we're gonna cd slash etc slash net plan ls we're gonna list everything here so there is a wi-fi config and a regular config so we are gonna sudo nano the non-wi-fi one so dash and once you get it started you hit tab so install a config dot yaml enter we have to enter a our sudo password all right so we're going to change this to that. So if you look here, I have Ethernet ports, or uh, interfaces, ENP, 0S25, and, 0S, uh, and 2S0. Um, so I checked, I did an IP link outside of this, and it showed that the 2S0 one was up and the 0S25 was down, meaning that the cable was plugged into 2S0. So I'm going to set DHCP4 and DHCP6 to false, I'm going to set my IP address to 192.168.1.5 slash 24. So that subnet is 255.255.255.0. My routes, this is going to be your gateway. So default via 192.168.1.1. That's my modem's address. And then my name servers for DNS are just Google's 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.8, or sorry, 8.8.4.4. We're going to save this by hitting Control X, typing in yes or Y. Hitting enter. Now we're good. So we should be good to SSH into this computer now. Let's go give that a try. All right, so we're back on our Windows machine here. Um, and as you see behind me, this Docker Media Server uh, Ubuntu tutorial by Smart Home Beginner is what I followed to do all this. We're gonna be running through basically every step uh, that Anand here wrote. I'll link this in the description. This thing is fantastic. It's you know 10,000 words long. There's a ton of stuff on here. We're not going to use all of it, um, and there's even more he has on his uh, on his GitHub, but we're going to use a lot of it, and uh, he's the reason that I was able to get this all going. So to get started here, to get into the computer we just configured, we're going to go to Terminal, so uh, CMD. Get this, get this up here. We'll zoom in a little bit. So we're going to SSH your username that you just created at the IP address you just created. Now we may need to restart that computer now that we set it up. Let's see. Yes. So we're going to restart that computer and we're going to try again here in a sec. To get out of this, you can hit Control C and we'll be right back. Okay, so that computer's been rebooted now. We can just hit up to do our last command here. Maybe not. Well, let's do some more digging. All right, well, that was embarrassing. Here is a half hour time wasted because of one letter. Um, SSH, well, let's click on it here. SSH, Ben at 192.168.1.5. Are you sure you wanna continue? Yes, we do. We know this is good. Let's go. All right, so that's added. Type in our password here. I'm going to show you the error. Uh, if you roll back the tape, you'll see it too. But let's go cd slash etc. Oh, we can just do this quick. sudo 
nano slash etc slash uh, was it net plan slash zero zero dot yaml right put our password in again okay so if you look back to what I did there were two little errors so I had that dash there it shouldn't be there right also main big one that dash may have been okay I'm not sure I had that end missing so our at work was not doing great now that we have a network we are good to go so I've set this to 1.5 and we are on it so the first thing we want to do uh, now that we've installed this is to upgrade it so sudo apt uh, update I think it is 61 packages can be upgraded sudo apt upgrade you guess I want to continue this is just getting our system up to date so we'll fast forward through this and start with the next step okay let's we'll hit okay here cool all right so let's update again see if there's anything left four can be upgraded let's see what they are list dash dash upgradable jammy updates all jammy updates jammy updates jammy updates so this is for python 3 software properties ubuntu advantage tools and notifier.com so there are other ways you can force these upgrades we don't really care that much just clear this and we'll get moving so our first step is going to be to install docker so let us go over here to a NAND setup, a non setup, and we've got step one, get your host good. We've got our Ubuntu server. Step two, we need to install Docker on it. So let's get this, shrink it down a bit. We already did sudo app update. Now we need to install some certificates. So let me get this set up for always on top, and then we'll keep moving. Okay, we're set up for always on top. So essentially, we're just going to walk through this. We're going to install the certs that we need. Cool. We're going to curl and grab this. So this should be the most up to date. Yep, that's this is all good here. Echo this. We're going to update again. And we will install Docker CE. All right, next we're going to verify that Docker is running. So we can do that with a sudo oh, that's the other one so we can just say sudo yeah system ctl status docker we are running great we can control c to get out of that we will go back to our install guide here next is docker compose so docker runs the containers right so we're creating uh, basically uh, pre-set up little os's that are going to run all of our uh, servers so we're gonna have one for Plex we'll have one for radar for sonar for NGINX um, compose lets those things be easily set up so we can basically force variables into the container for how we want it to set up or how we want it to be set up and we'll create a docker compose file that sets those all up for us that's what we're gonna, gonna do today so first we'll get docker compose on here now this here right there I just installed 2.5 I'm gonna want to take that back off because we want to get, I think it's at 2.15.1 right now. So to remove that, uh, quick Google search, uh, how to remove Docker Compose from terminal. I think it's just a delete, you delete a certain file here. But yeah, so sudo rm slash uh, user slash local slash bin slash docker compose. All right, 
what we really want to do here is, and we can check this where he says latest release of Docker Compose. We're on 2.15.1. So what that looks like for us is taking this command here, going back to here, making that 2.15.1, hitting enter. Awesome. Now we're going to change our permissions for this. Cool. And next thing's going to be NGNIX. So what this is going to let us do is go directly to our services, our service from our outside internet. So you need a domain name for this. Um, I have one that's like seven bucks a year. You can get those from a lot of places. You do not need a hosting service since our server is the host. Um, so you don't need to pay extra to, to make that website available. You just need the domain itself. So if you're going to do all this, uh, and we do recommend, like he says here, it's like eight bucks a year, seven bucks a year, and we're going to need Cloudflare, Cloudflare as well. So before we get into setting up all the NGNIX and making sure that all works, we need to set up some folders inside of inside of our environment. So if we get back to our Plex here, or to our server here that we're SSH'd into, we are going to create a folder here. So sudo mkdir, we're making a directory, slash home, slash ben, that's going to be your username, slash docker. So now if we uh, cd slash home slash ben and list them out, we can see we have a docker folder right there. So now inside that docker folder, we're going to create a few things as well. So I'm just going to move into there quick. Uh, before we do that, we're going to set some permissions, but I'll move into uh, docker. Cool. So there's nothing inside of docker right now. We're going to create an app, da app data folder. We're going to create a Docker Compose YAML file, and we're going to create an environment hidden file here that's going to store our credentials. So first thing we're going to do is set up the app data folder. So let's just do, um, well, let's get some permissions on the on the Docker folder first. So he, he runs through all this. So we're going to sudo apt install acl. Beautiful. sudo chmod 775 home slash ben slash docker and then we can just copy some things here too so this is the 775 is a is a directing it to some certain uh, permissions that you'll have then this here is setting some other permissions up for this folder So we should see a plus sign here. He's saying uh, if we take a look at, there is a way to view all this. He goes through that up here. So if we do ls dash lh, we'll see that we've got root root ben ben. That's everything. There's nothing inside Docker yet. If we cd out of this ls dash alh so docker has root privileges everything else has been and then we've got you know above us has some root privileges as well but let's get back into docker okay all right so yeah you'll see that it has the plus sign here we're going to create our uh, env file here so touch dot env the dot before it makes it hidden, so when you do an ls, you don't see it. Well, you don't see it now because it didn't work. You have a sudo touch.env ls, you still don't see it. ls a, it'll pop up. Um, we're going to change some permissions for that. sudo chawn root root.env. So you're going to need root permission to be able to view this. And then sudo ch mod 600. ENV. All right, now if we do our ls-lh, oh, you'll see that it's got that EMV file has root permissions. It also has the plus there. So we need to edit that now. So that's a sudo nano. So this squiggly line here is equivalent to slash home slash ben. So if I, if you take a look at this here, cd squiggly line, 
It's going to take me right to that slash home slash Ben. Same thing as CD slash home slash Ben. Really line. Okay. We're CD back into Docker. So right now that we're in Docker, you could just say sudo nano.env. And we're going to put this information into there. So I've got it pre-configured for what I need. And we want to back these up. So what this is, we're creating some variables that we're going to end up using inside of our uh, Docker Compose file. So this stuff here is, uh, it keeps it hidden. So you don't have to see your passwords and stuff in Docker Compose. So I will be putting my passwords in here. You won't be seeing it, but then I can reference them in my Docker Compose. So your time zone, look that up, change that to what you are, your user directory, your Docker directory, and then some storage directory. This data directory is going to end up changing. So this is basically, we're going to map some uh, stuff from our Plex server to here, uh, or, or from here to our Plex server, I guess, so that the Plex server knows where its media location is. I've got some external hard drives we're going to end up mounting at the end of this. So that's going to eventually change. But for now, it gives us a good starting point. So let's exit out of that. Control X. Yes to save it. Hit Enter. OK. So now we're going to start with Docker Compose. So he goes over some what Docker Compose is, how to run it, um, some, some commands for it. So what we need to do, though, is this is where we're going to create our uh, Docker Compose YAML file. So sudo nano. We're inside a Docker uh, folder already. So we'll just say docker-compose.yml. OK. First thing, version 3.9. That's the version of Docker Compose we're writing all this in so that it knows how to interpret it. We're going to set up a network. So this here is uh, defining a few different things. So you need Docker Compose 3.5 or higher to define the networks this way. We're bridging it to our host. And then we're creating a thing called NPM proxy. So what this is going to do is allow us to put all of our services on this NPM proxy network. And that network is going to be on the 192.168.89 subnet. So all of our services are only going to be accessible through the NPM proxy network. Um, and then they'll be bridged out to our host. So from our host, we won't be able to access these. Uh, but we will be able to forward ports to them as needed. So that's everything there. If you wanted to change this, you absolutely could. Um, Anon developed this extension field section here. So this makes, as he says here, makes the file a little less readable. But it does give you less lines. So all we're doing here, this is a YAML file. YAML files, uh, the ind indentation of the markup language is incredibly important. So for example, networks here is at, at the main, the root level here. So we don't have any spaces from the edge. Anything inside of networks has two spaces in front of it. Anything, anything inside of that has two spaces in front of it. So as you define things, you have to make sure that your tab, you know, your your uh, indentation is two spaces in for everything. Uh, it's it's very important for that. So what he's doing here is creating some things that we can reference. So there's common environment variable. This is our time zone and our user ID. This is what network it's going to reference. This is whether it would restart always or not. He explains all this in here. Essentially, what it lets us do is just call something a common key core and it would apply these attributes to that service so certain services will either call core or apps or media and it just saves us you know this five lines of code it's nothing crazy it does simplify things a bit it just makes it harder to read so read through what he has here it'll explain it a little better and the next thing we're going to need to do is install services this is where the bulk of our stuff comes in uh, so now that we have services here, the first thing we're going to do is some front-end stuff, which is starting with nginx proxy manager. So this needs to be tabbed in twice. Comments don't really matter, but because we're inside of services, anything that we paste here from this nginx needs to be tabbed in, you know, spaced in, so that it's two under services. So we're going to have to go through here and make sure that's the case. Right now it's not. So. And this is where you can run into the trouble. You need to make sure that everything is properly spaced out. When I first did this, I messed up 
that is networks or ports. I had ports spaced in under networks and could not figure it out. Had to get the help of some some nice guys there on the Discord that uh, Anon links to. But this should be everything. So everything's spaced in properly. And we've got our NGINX proxy manager ready to go. It's called NPM. All right, so what it's going to do is it'll have an address of 89.254. And it's going to expose ports 80, 80, and 40, or sorry, 80 and 443. And then it'll sit at port 81. So control X, save, go. What we can do now is run our Docker uh, compose file. So what that's gonna that command is let me grab it sudo docker compose dash f this is where it's located at slash home slash ben docker docker compose yaml we're gonna call it up and we're gonna run it as a daemon so we hit enter it's pulling all the stuff we need for npm and gix proxy manager All right, so it has started. Um, so we can view the services. So that was in up here. He lists out how you can use Docker. And Docker sudo docker ps a. So let me zoom out a little here so it makes sense. Uh, what we can see here is that image nginx proxy manager latest is running. And it's getting these ports here, 443 to 443, 80 to 441, 443 to 443. So what that means for us now is we should be able, let's get rid of all this here. We can go to 192.168.1.5, colon 81. And look at that. We've got NGINX Proxy Manager. So we're going to minimize this. And you can create an account with this. Uh, we're going to log in here as the default admin at example.com and change me. So admin at example.com, change me. All right, we're going to change this to admin. Admin. There's my email. Oh, I changed uh, something wrong there, but let's do a password. Um, current password has changed me. All right. So we now have an admin role here. So the next step is going to be to get Portainer. So don't need to have this. It's just a nice web UI to see what containers are running. Uh, so as we do with each of these things, what we're going to do is go back to our uh, compose file scroll to the bottom so you can use control down to get to each comment or to each like main thing just get, just get to the bottom faster and we're going to add in here the portainer setup again this is underneath services so we got to make sure this is all tabbed in or spaced in twice beautiful so this is going to use our variable for docker directory here it's going to be on port 9000 and we don't have to change anything else. So control X, control Y, or sorry, control X and Y, and then Docker Compose. And then we can run that again. You'll see it start to pull Portainer here. Awesome. So that's on port 9000. So again, we can test by going to colon 9000. Beautiful. That's all there. The next step is downloaders so i don't really use torrents i do use uh nzbs what's the word there use net yep i use use net so i'm going to get back into our compose file get to the bottom of it and let's start with so this is just a header here We're gonna, so we just did our front end portainer and nginx these are kind of our back end downloaders so let's get nzb git on here and we're going to have to space everything in again. So this is going to be on port 6789. And it's going to download to this downloads directory here. It's going to download, uh, it's going to get app data from here. So we're just going to store its config files. So control X, Y, 
Enter. Put this up. All right, it's running as well. So again, back to NGNIX, add a proxy host. So it's gonna be called nzbgit.rdomain. Name is nzbgit on port 6789. Oh, 6789. Block common exploits, choose our certificate, save. And there she is, cool. What is next? Transmission, if you're using uh, torrents, so this will set this up. You can also set it up because it has a built-in VPN kill switch. So inside of here, you can put your VPN username and password. So this would go inside of that .env file, transmission password, transmission username, and then you're just referencing it from here, as well as your, here he uses fastest VPN. Uh, they have some built-in ones, uh, private internet access, PIA is the one I use. So that is built in there. You can set all that up. We're not going to go through that. Um, next to our, our recorders. So he calls them PVRs. I would call these uh, media handlers or, or management. Um, does not matter. So let's get down here. We're going to add in our PVRs. This is all still under services, so it's all two spaces in. Um, but we're just labeling it so we know where we're at. So radar, if you're not familiar with any of these, radar and sonar um, manage your files. So when you request something, radar handles uh, movies and sonar handles TV shows. You request a movie or a TV show, radar and sonar, make sure your library doesn't have it. Then they go out and find it. They send that over to NZB Git or your torrent handler. It downloads it for you, puts it into your Plex media server, and then it scans again, radar or sonar scan again, say, great, we have that here. So for movies, it's more of a one-time thing. For TV shows, it can maintain an active series. So it keeps checking, and if there's any new uh, episodes that have come out, it'll download those automatically so that you'll keep up to date with the series. So there's radar there. We don't need to change anything. This is just showing where the media is gonna download to. You would want to change this for, this is showing you what uh, directories are exposed to this container. So when you go to do your settings for Radar and Sonar, you're going to want to change these to whatever external hard drives or NAS or anything you're running. Um, so you can go in here and expose those hard drives to it so that in your settings, you're able to select those as your download folders. So we're just going to do these both at once here. Uh, that's going to be on 7878 and then Sonar for TV is going to be on 8989. Easy. Cool. Control X, Y, enter. Let's run our Docker Compose. All right. We're getting there. Now we are getting to the big media servers. So. I'm gonna use uh, Plex, you can use Jellyfin, MB, Cody, whatever you wanna use. He also shows here Aerosonic Advanced for music streaming. Um, I'm gonna skip that for now, it's a music server. I haven't used it, um, but I do use Plex. So he does show here um, where you need to set up your page rules so that you can uh, bypass the proxy on anything that starts with a certain uh, word. So he, he uses Proxair, Proxplex, ProxJF, whatever he's using. Um, I use my, so my air, my plex, my jellyfin, whatever you want. But this lets you get around the three roll issue. So anything that starts with that and a wild card, it'll bypass the proxy so that you don't send your streaming stuff through the Cloudflare pro proxy and violate their terms of service. So again, back to our Docker Compose file, back to the bottom. We're going to call this media. Cool. And we're going to go down to the plex option. All right, so for this, the only thing you're going to need to add, uh, a couple things. If you are exposing different volumes to Plex, so you have different uh, mounted drives, you need to put them here so that Plex can, can have access to them. And you need to put a Plex claim token inside of your ENV file for this. So 
the Plex claim token can be found. Uh, you got to go into your Plex uh, login and watch some media, view the MX XML and your tokens in the URL bar up there. There's a ton of guides on how to get that, but that's what you need for that. So let's exit out of this. We're going to head over to our .env file. We're going to make a thing down here called Plex claim. And we're going to paste it in there. So you're not going to see mine, but it'll be in there, I promise. All right, so we got that claim token in. We are going to run our compose here. Oh, I did not set our server IP variable. So that is down here. That's going to tell it how to get to Plex or where, where Plex is at. So if we go back into our env file, again, you're not going to see it. All right, so I just added to that env file uh, a line that said server underscore IP equals, and then in quotes, I put 192.168.1.5, so it knows how to get to it. So let's run that again. We don't get that, that error, so that's great. All right, to 192.168.1.5, call on 32400. See, that works. Cool, so that would have me log in. The first time you access this, the server will either have to be on the local Plex server and use that, or you can access to 32400 web uh, using the local IP address of it. Um, you will not be able to do it with the domain. So, cool. Settings. It sees the server. We have remote access. This is great. Now, what we're accessing here, though, is a different Plex server. So, I've got, as I said before, another Plex server running right now. So, we're going to have to kill that Plex server until we get, you know, to get this all up and running. So that ends the apps that we need to make all of this work. There's a ton more that you can add uh, for functionality, for extended utilities, um, for music, for uh, file browsing, for Docker logs, all that kind of stuff, a lot of stuff. But we're going to focus on transferring Plex over to a new server. So old server to new server, there's a, a way to do that. You can keep all of your user um, history. You can keep all your users on there. There's a little bit of a changeover, but it's not too bad. So on the next video, we're going to cover that. This gets all your Docker stuff up and running. Um, the next video will cover the transfer of Plex from one server to another and the reset up of Sonar, Radar, NZB Git. And then we're going to install a thing called Organizer. I'm sorry, Overseer. An overseer lets your users request titles, um, notifies you, and then will automatically send those to either Sonar or Radar. So you can go to your website, basically like a uh, yeah, browse Netflix almost. You can pick which one you want, hit go, and uh, it'll give you a notification. You can either uh, approve or deny the request. Um, so that's coming in the next video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll put a link to Anand's startup here. It's incredibly helpful. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.